Continuing our journey in chapter 16, in 16.2 we're going to talk about entropy. And so there's the learning outcomes expectations. Take a look at that. Um, pause and read through if you so choose. Yeah, 16.2, we're going to talk about entropy. And entropy is a weird thing. There's many definitions to many different people. In fact, it's kind of hard to nail down a definition, but uh, perhaps the easiest one to grasp uh, intellectually is you can think about it uh, as a measure of the randomness or disorder in a system. And so uh, this entropy S, which we denote as S in thermodynamics, the more ordered a system is, the less entropy it has, the smaller the S. The more disordered, uh, the greater entropy the system has. And so we can think about it roughly in that way. Another way to define it, at least uh, in terms of statistical mechanics, is the number of microstates that exist. And so you can think about a system can be arranged any number of ways, and those number of ways can be think, thought of as microstates. And so it's basically a, a detailed snapshot of one given configuration of a system, and millions of these microstates can exist. And so we, we'll take a, a simple example where we have you know red, blue, green, and yellow spheres. They can exist in two compartments a bunch of different ways, right? They can also exist in different positions, but we're just going to narrow this down to the number that are in each compartment. And so here's two possible microstates where it's four and zero. Here it's a two and two um, microstate. And so you can think about all the possible ways you could draw this. And so you can have four on this chamber, well, zero in this, zero in this, four in this, three and one different combinations, two and two different combinations. Keep in mind, we're keeping track of which colored sphere is in which chamber. And so if you think about all the different ways that this can exist, we have 22 possible microstates. And so there's two that are four and zero, there's eight that are three and one, there are 12 that are two and two, and this is just based on statistics. And so those are the microstates, and we can think about each one of these as a configuration of the system. So when we look at the different possibilities, we have two that are four and zero, we have eight that are three and one, and 12 that are two and two. We can think about defining, uh, defining entropy in terms of the number of microstates that can exist. And so this one only has two microstates. This is the lowest probability scenario. This is the least disordered. This has the least entropy. This is more ordered. Look on the other hand, the more likely one, this is the 12 microstate condition. This is a less ordered system. It has more entropy. It's more disordered. And so you can think about, you know, which one's the most favorable microstate to exist. It's this one. The least favorable is this one. This has the least entropy. This has the most entropy. And so typically when a system System reaches equilibrium or when it reaches equilibrium it wants to go to the most disordered configuration or the configuration that has the largest number of microstates available. And so one word we use to describe this uh, in terms of the number of microstates is the multiplicity of a given state. And so you can think about that as a multiplicity of 12, 8, and 2. And so Boltzmann took this one step farther rather than just talking about it in terms of number of microstates. Uh, he basically generated an equation that allows us to re relate this number of microstates or the multiplicity to entropy and do this in a numerical form. And it's this equation right here. And so entropy is equal to K. K in this case is Boltzmann constant, which is named after Boltzmann, uh, times the natural log of the multiplicity of the system. And so looking back on it, we know qualitatively the one with two microstates has less entropy than the one with 12 microstates has more entropy, but we can actually do the calculation, right? We can plug those numbers in, we can get an entropy number. And as you can see here, again, this is 3.4 times 10 to the minus 23. This is 9.6 times 10 to the 24. Not only does this have more entropy, but it has three times more entropy. And it's this one's more likely to occur. Um, this one is the uh, least ordered. This one is the most ordered of those possibilities. And so when talking about entropy in terms of chemical reactions, rarely do we get to count the number of microstates and things like that, number of configurations that can exist. But we do care about the entropy change for reaction, because as we'll show later in the chapter, we need enthalpy, which is the exoendothermic, whether it releases or takes in heat. We also know what need to know what the entropy change is to figure out what the Gibbs free energy change. And so let's say we have A plus B going to C plus D, right? And so we could talk about spheres and chambers as the entropy increasing or decreasing. We can do the same with chemical reactions. So like, are these higher entropy or lower entropy? Does the entropy increase or decrease as the reaction progresses? And so we can think about the entropy of the product or the final, 
we can think about the entropy of the initial and we can figure out the change in entropy for a given process. So if we just take final minus initial, just like we did with enthalpy, we can do this and figure out the change in entropy for a given reaction. And so if, if, if we get a negative value, uh, basically it says initially there was more entropy than there was at the final, that means entropy has decreased, as in the reaction becomes more ordered, as in going from A to B, A to B is less ordered, C to D is, C and D is more ordered. We can have a positive entropy, and in this case we have basically the entropy of the product, the, the product is more disordered than the reactant, or the entropy is... Um, of the final, this species that you generate, this number is bigger than this number. So the final is more disordered than the initial. And so we want to know how does the entropy change? And so we'll find out later we can do this quantitatively by using you know tabulated values like we did with delta H. But there's some general trends that we can just look at a system and we can make a prediction, you know, which one's going to be bigger? Does the entropy increase or does the entropy decrease? Does it become uh, more ordered, as in a de negative delta S, or does it become less ordered, as in a positive delta S? And so the, the general trends we'll describe are for the state and phase, temperature, number of atoms in a molecule, number of molecules in a reaction. And so entropy and state, uh, I think this one should make sense intuitively. Um, so comparing solids, liquids, and gases, gases are typically going to be less ordered, right? Uh, solids, I mean, especially crystalline solids, have a very particular order. They have a size, they have a shape. Liquids are less ordered. Gases are even less ordered. Still, they'll occupy whatever volume they can. And so the trend is solids are going to have the lowest entropy, liquids will be higher, gases will be much higher. And so when talking about a phase change, you can think about which direction is it changing? Is it becoming more ordered or less ordered? So if you're talking about going from a solid to a gas, it is increasing uh, the, the, the disorder of the system. And so this is going to be a very positive delta S. It basically says entropy is increasing, this is entropically favorable, it wants to go from the order of being a solid to the disorder of being a gas, and that gives you a positive delta to S. Uh, in contrast, if you want to freeze something, you want to go from a liquid to a solid. This goes from disorder to order. The system is becoming more ordered. This is going to give you a negative delta S, or it's going to be entropically unfavorable. And so the disorder goes down, so the final is more ordered than the initial. This gives you a negative delta S value, and this is actually entropically unfavorable. Uh, thinking about temperature, um, and this one should make sense too, somewhat intuitively, uh, lower temperature molecules are moving slowly, at higher temperature molecules are moving more quickly. And so <coughs> the higher the temperature, the, uh, the, the, the more motion, the more rotation, the more, more vibration, the more ways that this system can exist. So this is going to be higher entropy than this will. And so looking at that again, back from our delta S, we have a final minus initial. If we increase the temperature, we're changing from this to this. So we're going from low S to high S. And so that's gonna give us a final greater than initial. That'll give us a positive delta S. If we decrease the temperature, we're going from high entropy to low entropy. Uh, it's basically gonna be initial is larger than final. And in that case, we're gonna have a negative delta S. And so yeah, temperature, the warmer it is, the more entropy, the more disordered the system is going to be. And as you heat up, you're going to get a positive delta S. And as you cool down, you're going to get a negative delta S. The other thing we can talk about is the number of atoms or number of molecules. In terms of number of atoms, um, basically the more atoms you have, the more uh, entropy it's going to have, the more states it can exist in. So more atoms equals more entropy. And so comparing this series, these are just hydrocarbons, methane, ethane, and propane. Th one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, and all the hydrogens to fill out the octet. You can actually look at the number of atoms, five versus eight versus 11. And just as you'd expect, the more atoms it has, the more entropy it'll have. And you can actually see that in this S value, this entropy value. This is 270, that's 230, that one's 286 the entropy increases as you add more atoms to the system. Basically, you can think about it as the number of ways those atoms can move and vibrate. This one can move around a lot more and is a lot more flexible than, say, this one. And so more atoms equals greater entropy. And so if you you know, add or remove atoms to a system, you're changing the uh, number of, of microstates that can exist and the entropy of that system. The final um, uh, 
category we're going to discuss, at least uh, qualitatively, is the number of molecules. And so just like atoms, more atoms equals more entropy, more molecules equals more entropy and a larger S value. And so uh, the assumption here is they're in the same phase. If you have a combination of changing the number of molecules and changing the phase, it gets really messy. But let, let's take an example here where let's say we take two nitrogen atoms and six hydrogen atoms. And we can put these together in, in a bunch of different ways, right? We can mix and match these components. Let's say we make NH3 molecules and we have two of them. And so in this case, we have eight, eight atoms and two molecules. We can also make N2 plus 3H2. And so in this case, it's still eight atoms, but it's actually four molecules. And so the number of ways that two molecules can exist versus four, this one has a lot more options. This has more microstates. It has a higher multiplicity. It also has a higher entropy. It is less ordered, whereas this one is more ordered. And so four molecules, even if the number of atoms are the same, four molecules is going to have greater entropy than two molecules. And so you can think about this in terms of a chemical reaction. If we're doing the reverse of the Haber-Bosch reaction, or the, the NH3 going to N2 and H2. Uh, our final is the four molecules. Our initial is the two molecules. One would expect that the entropy is going to increase in this system. And so because it's increasing, final is greater than initial. We have a positive delta S. Entropy increases in this process. If we try to go the reverse direction, turns out this is entropically unfavorable, right? This is going from disorder to ordered. The universe isn't particularly happy when this happens, but we can drive this reaction forward because of the heat in the process. And so, yeah, take home again is this, this message of, you know, more molecules equals more microstates is a larger S value. <coughs> that S value dictates whether it's going to be uh, a positive delta S or negative delta S. All right, so there's your summary on the qualitative ones. If we have a negative delta S, it means the system became more ordered. If we have a positive delta S, it be, the system became less ordered or more disordered. Um, in terms of states and phases, we have less structure equals more entropy. Um, and so gases have more entropy than solids. Temperature, the higher the temperature, the more the entropy. As you cool it down, the entropy goes down. Uh, heating it up is a positive or a positive delta S. Cooling it down is a negative delta S. We have number of atoms in a molecule, more atoms, more entropy. We have number of molecules in a reaction. Assuming they don't change phase, more molecules equals more entropy. So yeah, there, there's your summary and you can actually see this numerically and we'll get into this more when we actually calculate entropy, but you can see again, uh, just looking at this S number, if you look at gaseous H2O versus liquid H2O, you can see the entropy number is higher. Um, yeah, you can see the number of molecules, the number of phases that exist, uh, comparing methane to say C2H6. This one has more atoms, higher entropy than this one. You can see gases have much higher entropy than solids. Um, molecules in a reaction doesn't show up here, but you guys get the the idea that these aren't just qualitative estimates these hold true most of the time and you can look at a reaction and say does the entropy increase does the entropy decrease uh, you can make a qualitative estimate all right so in summary, we, we were thinking about this idea of entropy. We can think about it in terms of the order or disorder of the system. The more ordered it is, the lower the entropy, the more disordered, the higher the entropy. We can think about it in terms of microstates or multiplicity. The more microstates, the more disordered, less microstates, more ordered. And so we can talk about change in entropy. That should be a delta S. Uh, we can estimate that delta S, whether it's positive, as in it becomes more disordered, or it's negative, it becomes more ordered. Based on the state and the phase, the temperature, the number of atoms, the number of molecules, all of us let, let us look at a reaction and make a prediction. Does entropy increase or does entropy decrease? All right, so we've defined spontaneity, we've defined entropy, and now uh, in the next video, we're going to dive into the second law and third uh, second and third uh, laws of thermodynamics, where we can start, you know, getting towards this idea of predicting spontaneity and whether a reaction favors products or favors reactants.